Donald Sutherland and Kate Nelligan star in Eye of the Needle, Tuesday at 8. Sunday, April 25th, gays and lesbians march on Washington, demanding equal rights. The people of Russia go to the polls. Will Yeltsin come out on top? And in Tulsa, incredible scenes of devastation as a tornado takes its deadly toll. From the newsroom, this is Channel 9 News Weekend with Reg Wells, Bill Vargas on sports, and George Lindsay Young's weather. Good evening, everyone. I'm Reg Wells. Gays and lesbians took to the streets of Washington today. They demanded equal rights and justice. Bob Costantini reports. It is a national coming out. Gays, lesbians, and bisexuals march in Washington, taking to the same streets that have seen civil rights, anti-war, military, and inaugural parades. Yes, there are some sites which the average person might consider outlandish, but organizers point out the vast majority of people here could blend in with any crowd anywhere. We're not here looking for an endorsement for our lifestyle. We're looking for protection for our lives, and that includes, you know, health care, and um, anti, uh, you know, uh, discrimination and housing and protection and uh, employment. It is a rights march. Planned for many months, every step is considered a move towards passage of a national gay lesbian rights bill, a bill to give federal protection because many states have refused. And America, do not be fooled by our loving spirit. Let no one doubt from this day forward our determination to take our rightful place. Much has been made of the fact President Clinton is out of town today. However, he did send a letter of support. At times, the crowd chanted, where is Bill? He was in Boston speaking to newspaper editors when some felt he should be making an appearance here to show his support. In Washington, Bob Costantini, Channel 9 News. In other news, an investigation will begin tomorrow into the tragic death of a North Brunswick boy the seven-year-old child was swallowed up by a sinkhole outside his house yesterday. After seven hours of digging, rescue workers did eventually find the boy, but it was too late. Attorney General Janet Reno made her first public appearance today since the end of the Waco standoff. She came to our area to talk to victims of crime, and Robert Miller was there. Violent crime costs this country one and a half billion dollars a year. The people of this tribute to crime victims know the losses of property and wages and more. This woman's daughter was murdered on a college campus. She told the audience that colleges hide crime statistics. I, for one, refuse to let our system of higher education in America become a breeding ground for violence and victimization. Jean's death will not be in vain. Because from our own tragedy, we learned that we can have a voice and we can work together to reduce violence on our college campuses. Jennifer Levin was murdered in Central Park by so-called preppy Robert Chambers. Jennifer's mother zeroed in on media insensitivity. She told of how she stepped out of a car on the day she learned of her daughter's death. This is how I met the press. At my most vulnerable moment of my life, they came in mass and started screaming at me. Did you know what happened to your daughter? Can you give us a comment? Tell us how you feel. And I stood there and I shrieked, my daughter's dead. Are you people crazy? Leave me alone. Inspiration through song was provided by a choir of ex-addicts. <laughs> A 10-year veteran of the victims' rights movement is the nation's new attorney general. That the most important thing to do when you threaten punishment is to carry it out and to mean what you say. We have got to have truth in sentencing so when that person goes away for 20 years, he knows we mean it. The FBI says there's a violent crime in this country every 17 seconds. That means there's probably one happening right now. On the Upper West Side of Manhattan, Robert Miller, Channel 9 News. Now, Janet Reno also defended her decision to end the standoff in Waco, Texas, and there is a new development there tonight. Medical examiners have identified one of the bodies removed from the compound as David Koresh's brother-in-law. Authorities say he was killed by a gunshot wound. Tonight, the battle over a Queen's strip club may be over. 
Residents of Forest Hills have been holding frequent demonstrations against Runway 69. The new dancers held their own counter demonstrations. Now a spokesman for the club says they've decided to leave. They're looking to move to a commercial area rather than a residential neighborhood. In Oklahoma, people are trying to pick up the pieces after a devastating tornado there. At least seven people were killed and more than 95 injured. Dan Ronan has more. A powerful storm with at least one tornado hit two big truck stops along Interstate 44 near Tulsa. Several huge 18-wheeler tractor trailers were tossed around like children's toys. Parking lots are covered with rubble and twisted metal. People took cover wherever they could find it. I heard the sirens first. I was going eastbound, and uh, I got on the expressway, and I looked up and saw a tornado coming, and I said, I can't be here. So I just pulled the truck off on the shoulder, got out, got down in the bar ditch, and when it all blew over, my truck and trailer weren't there. They were about 100 yards back behind me. They must have passed over my head. I'm lucky to be here. Other people in cars also got off the highway and jumped into a ditch when they saw the tornado bearing down on them. There's about probably 10 of us that got in there. A couple of people didn't make it all the way in. They got thrown, thrown, and, and um, just, we, as it passed, we just stopped. There's a few people, we held onto the bars to keep us in there. While the tornado demolished the truck stops, it also hit dozens of homes. A woman and her family used to live in this brick house that took a direct hit. It looks like fog kind of, and it swirled around. The twister also hit a trailer park in suburban Tulsa, damaging an estimated 80 mobile homes. One official says the tornado stayed on the ground for several minutes, striking an area about two miles long and a mile wide. Dan Ronan, reporting. Up next tonight, returns from Russia will have the latest on a crucial vote for Boris Yeltsin. Also tonight, a suspect is under arrest in the killing of a journalist. And later tonight, we'll ease on down to the Whistler's Convention. But first, a man who whistles like a teapot. George Lindsay Young. Oh, here we are. It was a fabulous day. 76 degrees, a little bit of breeze. How can you beat it? What about tomorrow morning, 7 a.m.? Here it is. A big change. Areas of rain, cool. Middle to upper 50. Coming up in just a bit. Hope you like today, because we've got Monday misery. Now here's Bill. You know what, George? The Mets played a little base brawl today, and the Jets go shopping, and they come up with a two for the price of one sale. We'll introduce you to their first round pick a little bit later in the chat. If you're planning to fly from over here to over there, then you should know that only one airline flies you nonstop to the most cities from over here to over there. And since that one and only airline is Delta, you know you'll be getting the warmest, most personal service in the sky on your way over, over there. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows the world over. Daryl Strawberry's back in town with Eric Davis of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Bonilla, Ojo, Fernandez, and Coleman are ready to start slugging. If you want hits, nine got the max. The pitch is hot, fastballs are humming, fans going crazy because the hit keeps coming. The hit just keep on coming, the hit keeps coming, I've got the max. The Mets come out cracking against the Dodgers Monday at 7.30. Nine got the max. Russians did something today they're not used to doing. They settled a political power struggle at the ballot box. Russian President Boris Yeltsin voted early. He's trying to prove he is no paper tiger. Yeltsin needs a simple majority to win a vote of confidence in constitutional reforms, giving him more power. But he needs more than half of Russia's 105 million voters to back him in his push for early presidential and parliamentary elections. There's plenty of hot air in Russian politics now that it has democracy. Yeltsin's vice president, Alexander Ruskoy, has turned against him and accuses him of corruption. Authorities shouldn't just serve their own interests. Turnout was heavy in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. Known as Little Odessa, thousands of Russian citizens there got a chance to vote by absentee ballot. I want uh, Yeltsin to be... It's very, very important to me, to my family, to my business. Wow. 
Early returns show Yeltsin winning the vote of confidence, but final results probably won't be in until sometime tomorrow. In our area, thousands of Cuban exiles held a rally. They marched from Union City to Miller Stadium in West New York. They're asking leaders of anti-Castro groups to work together for a free and democratic Cuba. And in other news from our area, here is Nine Watch. Three men are being held in the shooting of a lobster fisherman in his boat on Long Island Sound. There are reports that the shooting stemmed from a territorial dispute with other lobster fishermen. In Manhattan, a suspect is charged in connection with the murder of a journalist in Washington Heights. Jose Cuevas was shot to death in November in a struggle with two would-be robbers. An escaped murderer from Maryland was arrested in Manhattan today. Police say the suspect decided to turn himself in. He was serving time for killing a Baltimore cop. And up next tonight, Bill Vargas has all the sports, including an amazing brawl at the Mets game. We'll have all the details and the action when we come back. After remarks by uh... Channel 9 News is brought to you by Dreyfus. Dreyfus knows opportunities have to be chosen carefully. Which is why our growth and income fund is so appealing, especially for your IRA. Last year, the Dreyfus Growth and Income Fund grew over 20%. More than double the performance of the S&P 500. For more information and a free prospectus, call 1-800-DREYFUS. Dreyfus Growth and Income Fund. Survival of the smartest. A revolutionary and a fantasy. The new Chandranev musical starring Tita Rivera. Directed by Harold Prince. Kiss of the Spider Woman on Broadway. Call Telecharge 239 6200. This is not a jungle or a tropical rainforest, yet it's home to more plant life than any place of its kind. It's the Lawn and Garden Center at Home Depot, where you'll get helpful advice from our certified gardening experts. Home Depot has truckloads of fresh, healthy flowering plants and shrubs arriving regularly. And our landscape plants are so hardy, we guarantee them for one full year. Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Well, we turn to sports now. George is supposed to do the weather, but there's a draft in the air, and you're telling us about it. I'm going to tell you about the draft? Yeah. Oh, I get it. The NFL draft. Right, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, well, you talk about keeping up with the Joneses. The Jets got themselves a Jones and a Johnson, too, in the first round of the NFL draft today. Picking third, they traded down to fourth, and then they received an extra player in the process. The two clubs, in effect, switched positions in the first round, and Phoenix traded to the Jets. Johnny Johnson, Phoenix running back. In Johnson, a former pro bowler, they get an experienced running back. Then with the fourth pick, they take linebacker Marvin Jones. He was the guy they wanted all along, and they were the team he wanted to play for. This is what I had hoped for, and, you know, it, it all came true, and, you know, it still hasn't all sunk in yet, so but later on tonight, I imagine, you know, it all become realistic for me. Of course, he had to sweat it out while the Jets worked out their trade. So I, I, was, I was just really, really, really nervous. So the Jets get the two-for-one with Johnson, and they also get kind of a two-for-one in that Marvin's older brother, Fred, his lifelong mentor, promises to spend a lot of time in New York to help his brother make the transition to being in the spotlight in the toughest city in America. I think Marvin have a very positive attitude about coming here, you know, because he's been faced with a lot of adversity through his life, and it's, it's just another challenge, you know, and, and, you know, he can meet challenges head on, and plus he has me right behind so it's like it's two loves. He is referring to the death of their mother when Marvin was only 11, coupled with the deaths of their sister and grandfather, all within the space of a few months. The first football challenge Jones faces is being named middle linebacker when he obviously prefers to play outside. It's something the Jets didn't tell him before he met with the media. <laughs> well, I have no choice. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to work inside or outside. I mean, I, I feel like I can... I can play both of them as equally as well. You know, I guess, you know, that's the starting point. But, 
you know, it might, you know, try me out somewhere else, you know, depending on how, you know, I learn that position or how things work out. Well, of course, time will tell. Meanwhile, the Giants, who did not, of course, have a first-round pick, used their second-round pick to take a defensive lineman, Michael Strahan of Texas Southern. With the number one pick in the draft overall, former Giants coach Bill Parcells, now the head man in New England, selected Washington State quarterback Drew Bledsoe. Parcells choosing Bledsoe over Rick Myrer, who was the number two selection, going to Seattle. Well, it was anticlimactic, but a win is a win is a win for the Knicks, right? Having already clinched the Eastern Conference Championship, the Knicks' final regular season game against Chicago sees John Starks on the fast break going behind the back to Patrick Ewing. Don't tell them it's a meaningless game. Knicks led early, but Chicago ties it just before halftime as Michael Jordan follows the Scottie Pippen miss. It's 43-all at the intermission. It stays tied throughout the third quarter, too, but then Ewing will start the fourth quarter, beating the defense and the shot clock. He finished with 22 and finished off the Bulls with the help of Starks, who also had 22 final, 89-84. Knicks tie a team record with 60 wins. The Nets, meanwhile, end the season in a free fall as Detroit's Olden Polonese scores 27 to lead the Pistons over the Nets. So the Nets lose 10 of their last 11. They will face Cleveland in the playoffs on Thursday. Elsewhere in the NBA, the record for free throw shooting broken by Minnesota's Michael Williams, who hit his 79th straight today. Well, it was supposed to be baseball, but it turned into base brawl. The Mets hosting San Diego this afternoon, and a fight breaks out out of nowhere between the Mets' Todd Hundley and Gary Sheffield. Hundley apparently thought Sheffield was peeking at his signs. That's a big no-no in baseball. Both ejected, no one hurt. Mets down two at that point, and then they fall further behind when Vince Coleman's error, he forgot his sunglasses, allows two San Diego runs. It's 4-1 Padres. They get it to 8-1 until Coleman makes up for it with this base hit, capping an incredible five-run inning for the Mets in the sixth. Coleman bringing home two. We're tied at eight. But the great comeback goes for not. Eighth inning attempted steal. Charlie O'Brien's throw goes awry. Tony Fernandez throw home is late. Craig Shipley scores. It's 9-8. That is how it ends. Mets fall below 500. The Yanks, meanwhile, set Mike Witt to the mound and Sam Militello to the minors. Witt's first start in almost two years, but Seattle's Pete O'Brien welcomes him back with a grand slam in the third. 4-2 Mariners. Yankees battle back to take the lead, though, and when Mike Stanley connects, a three-run shot in the fifth, the Yankees are up 9-5. to five. They get a scare in the ninth when Seattle homers off Steve Howe, but Steve Farr then comes on to strike out Rich Amaral for the save. 10-9 Yankees. The NHL playoffs continue, and it will continue for the Jersey Devils. They faced elimination today, but they get an early opportunity five minutes into the game with a 5-3 power play. Bruce Driver to Stefan Rouché slaps it home. It's 1-0 Devils. Meanwhile, they put the clamps on Mario Lemieux. John McClain shows the only way to defend against the Penguin superstar. And Lemieux says, if you're going to treat me that way, I'm just going to take your stick and go home. That's no way to treat a superstar. Devils would increase their lead to 2-0 in the second as that uh, first period power play continues on a five-minute deal into the second. And Rouché to Tommy Alvalin. Devils three for six on power plays today and win four to one to stay alive. As we check it on the scoreboard, Pittsburgh, of course, still up three games to one. St. Louis eliminates Chicago in a sweep. Calgary and L.A. now tied at two games apiece. Toronto also evens their series at two. Vancouver is leading Winnipeg two to one there in the third period of play. And don't ever scare me again like that. I really thought you were going to asked me to do the weather going in. <laughs> oh, we were. Oh, okay. <laughs> and coming up later, George will have the complete forecast. Plus, we'll go to the Whistler's Convention, and the Friars Club picks its man of the year. If you stay with us. Channel 9 News is brought to you by your Tri-State Lincoln Mercury dealers. The all-new 1993 Lincoln Mark 8. Four cams. 32 bells, 280 horses. Mark 8, together with Lincoln Town Car and Continental, make Lincoln the only domestic car line to offer dual airbags and four-wheel ABS brakes standard on every 93 model. And when you consider how easy it is to lease a Lincoln right now, it all adds up to this. You simply have to have it. Mark 8, Town Car, Continental, at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. It's everything you'd expect from an international flight. Designed to include a choice of three separate cabins, the comfort of handcrafted leather seats, and the cuisine of the world's finest chefs. 
A flight of international quality in every respect but one, because this flight never leaves the country. American Airlines International Service to Los Angeles and San Francisco. A spacious business class with wide leather seats and internationally acclaimed wines. A first class with individual video units and sumptuous sleeper seats. And in all three classes, the unmistakable style and comfort of an international flight. Americans three-class service from New York's JFK to Los Angeles and San Francisco, where coast-to-coast -coast travel rises to an international level. What does it take to be the world's most popular musical? It takes a cast of characters you will never forget. Caught up in the triumph and tragedy, the passion and redemption, the hope and glory of an unforgettable story. It takes heart-stopping music and a blazing production of epic scope and soaring imagination. But mostly it takes the love of people everywhere, the people who come to see it again and again. Les Miserables, the world's most popular musical. All across our area, people hit the road today. It was the annual March of Dimes Walk America to help raise money in the fight against birth defects. North Jersey walkers exceeded their expectations, raising $1.1 million. Bill says it felt like a million dollars today, but that's the extent of what he wants to do for the weather. Yeah, so but what does he know? Turned in. Now, I understand the way it's going to work well, now. It's right. every other week. I mean about weather. Anything course, else nice to weather, say? About weather. <laughs> now, the way I understand it is Bill will do uh, weather every other weekend, and I do sports. They then, tell me, yeah, it's making us more of a, a rounded deeper, person, yeah. you know, or whatever that means. What a day. What a day! 76 degrees, it felt fantastic. What about right now? A wee bit cooler, but still pleasant. It is partly cloudy outside at the present time. 63 degrees. What does Bill know? 64% relative humidity, southwesterly winds at 8, and barometer 29, 97, and rising. I'll make it up to you, Bill. I promise. I promise I will. All right, here's what's happening around the rest of the nation. It may have been a fantastic day here, but more thunderstorms for the midsection of the nation today. Showers, thunder showers, even some severe from portions of Oklahoma, where, remember yesterday, they had the strong thunderstorms and even a tornado near the Tulsa area, stretching on into portions of Illinois, Indiana, even western Pennsylvania. Here's the radar summary. Hail, hail, hail. One-inch diameter hail. Karnak, Texas, three-quarter inch diameter hail in Columbus, Mississippi, not Ohio. And uh, even more hail in the Baton Rouge area. And here's the rain stretching all the way up now, right along the frontal system. Let's take a look at the zoomed-in picture now of the radar. Nothing overhead right now, but here's the front. Pushing in as the nighttime hours go on, sometime after midnight, probably around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., you'll be catching Z's, but the rain will be starting. You'll worry about it tomorrow morning, though, as the uh, commute will probably be slowed as the rain intensity picks up during the morning hours simply from glorious today to glum tomorrow as the frontal system pushes on in. Here's your forecast now from the Channel 9 Weather Lab. Tonight, increasing cloudiness, pleasantly mild, showers developing after midnight, middle 50. Tomorrow, occasional rain, possible thunderstorms, breezy, cooler, low to mid 60s, and tomorrow night, lingering showers, breezy and chilly, low to mid 40s. Here's the dog sought after by every major agent across the country. It's Gizmo the Weather Dog. Tomorrow, he's an umbrella fella. Down the road, for the rest of the work week, here's what we have. A rainy Monday, Tuesday looking a little bit better, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, mm-hmm, looking pretty good. 63 on Thursday, under nothing but sunshine. So for all those times that we said, gee, why did it have to rain on the weekend and be nice on Monday? Well, it was a nice Finally, weekend, we got weekend. it right. And your dog, I assume, put it shovel away for the, for the season? He's gone. Okay. Gone. Well, up later tonight, the Friars Club names its Man of the Year, and they're not just whistling Dixie at the Whistler's Convention. Stay with us. It's the Tony Award-winning Best Musical on Broadway. Crazy for you. And the best way to get tickets? Call now! Thanks to Smart Rate from the Discover Card, 
interest charges now have a whole new bottom line. Smart rate, currently as low as 14.9%. It pays to discover. Have you seen all the press Ford's been getting? The Ford Taurus is the number one selling car in America. In fact, of the 10 best selling vehicles in America, five of them are Ford. Only your Ford dealer can make this claim. I keep telling you, Ford is winning back America. Now you can lease the number one selling compact pickup in America, the Ford Ranger, for just $1.99 a month for 24 months with no down payment. Your Ford dealer is winning back America with five of the 10 best sellers. See your tri-state quality Ford dealer and see for yourself. Are you tired of being assigned hard to remember numbers by an impersonal phone company? Use your own number with the MCI card. That's a whole lot easier. So I just put that on the ball bearings and that clears up the squeak? You're a genius. That's my mom. <laughs> Talk on the phone a lot when away from home? MCI introduces two hours of free calling card calls. Call and sign up for an MCI card now. What do they call a duct tape for, anyway? Darian gets roped into a deadly showdown on Time Tracks, Wednesday at 8. WWOR-TV, the first New York area station to provide closed captioning of the local news. The closed captioning of tonight's news has been underwritten by PSENG. The power is in your hands. The main course at the Waldorf tonight was roast. The Friars Club honored playwright Neil Simon as its man of the year. A slew of stars paid tribute, including Bernadette Peters and Martin Short. MC Chevy Chase directed traffic, calling in Jack Klugman. Anthony Quinn paid his respects, and of course, it would not be a truly star-studded evening without the presence of Larry King. By the time the roast was over, the guest of honor was indeed well done. Finally tonight, it is time to pucker up and whistle along. What you're looking at and listening to is the National Whistlers Competition is being held in Lewisburg, North Carolina. Contestants come from all over the world to share some hot air. Guess you have to be a windbag to do that. That's our report for tonight. I'm Reg Wells. Thanks for joining us. If you see news happening, call the Channel 9 News Hotline, 1-800-537-9999.